Learning all those topics as you continue on your CCIE journey is going to be quite a bit. But when it comes down to the day of the exam, what is your desktop environment going to look like? We'll find out more next. Welcome back to my journey on the CCIE Enterprise. What we want to do today is make sure that we take a look and show you a little bit about what the desktop environment is going to look like on the day of your exam. Now, if you're wondering, like, am I telling you something that you shouldn't know or that you shouldn't actually have access to? Well, that's not correct. Cisco wants to make sure as you come into the day of your lab exam that what the focus is going to be is going to be on the topics that are actually on the exam and that you're not so nervous about the desktop environment that you'll be taking a look at and what it is that you'll be facing. So the great thing is that recently, the CCIE program itself has actually went ahead and allowed for you to download what that desktop environment is gonna look like and some of the tools that will also be available to you as you get started. So let's go ahead and take a look here and I'll show you what's happened. So I went to, of course, the CCIE inside of the Learning Network itself at Cisco. And when I did so, I was able to download this. And we'll include a link, of course, below in our description so that you can do the same thing. So this is what the desktop environment looks like when you get into the exam. Now, what you'll have access to are two 24-inch physical monitors, a QWERTY keyboard, and a mouse as well. Now, with the two 24-inch monitors, you're not limited to just that too. If I go ahead and I zoom in to the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll notice that there are these two boxes that are right here that will also give you access to another desktop. So if you think about it, you'll actually have a lot of screen real estate that you can deal with as you're actually preparing and actually going through your exam as you need to, to be able to manage those multiple desktops between those two 24-inch monitors. That was one of the first things I wanted to show you as well. Now, the other thing that's a big change from the previous iteration of the CCIE exam is that they're no longer running Windows as the background desktop operating system, but now they've decided, of course, to change to a Linux distribution as the background. Now, that is just a fundamental change that allows them to do a little bit more natively, of course, with the idea of using Python and some of the other environments that are actually fairly easy for them to go ahead and load up a bunch of tools on. And that's what they've done as well. Now, even though this particular distribution right now is a Debian distribution, it will be updated probably throughout the year. It doesn't mean that it will change or overall affect how it is that you can perform on your exam, but they will be having updates probably once a year, if not twice a year, to ensure that everything's actually the way that it needs to be. Now, part of this uh, strategy, of course, is to allow you, like I said, to become familiar with it so you're not as nervous, so you'll be able to download this right away. Once you download it and you launch it right up, it should pop right up on the screen for you. You won't have to worry about a login, but even if you do have to worry about a login, the actual username and password combination for you to be able to gain access in is going to be Cisco and Cisco. That way, if you happen to log out and you need to log back in, it's perfectly there for you want you, of course, to be able to navigate around and make sure you understand what it is you'll be facing here. Now, they do include just about every tool that you'll need to be able to accomplish anything that you need to on the CCIE exam. Now, most of the tools that are actually going to be uh, already installed for you are directly from the repository that it actually needs. Only a couple of packages are not directly from there. So notice on the screen, we have a link there for Postman, as well as for the Eclipse and the Python that's there too. But just about everything else comes directly from the repository that the operating system is from as well. So everything is built in. You'll also of course see the addition of Wireshark is also built in there. And then the terminal itself is the LX terminal that you can gain access into. And if you choose to, you always can get directly into root access if you need. Now, according to Cisco and some of the webinars they've also been producing, there is not necessarily anything that's going to be involved in the tools itself that you will be required to use. But at the same time, they want you to have access to the tools that are available, at least up in this point as we actually are showing this, that you'll actually see the way that it will be on your exam. Now, remember, it's a QWERTY keyboard as well. 
It should give you access to the background where you can change the logical layout of the keyboard as you need to, but you're of course not gonna change the physical keyboard itself as well. So make sure you pay attention there too. Now, when we start talking about some of the tools that are available, well, there are some different editors that are available to you as well. If I go to our button down here, and then I select up at accessories, you can now see that there'll be a calculator that's gonna be there for you, as well as Joe's own editor. Notice the Midnight Commander editor will also be there, as well as the text editor, and Vim, of course, will be installed, ready for you to actually go and do whatever else you need. As well as G-Edit, you name it, there's actually going to be that uh, that you'll also see. Now, in terms of programming, some APIs will also be available as well. Postman will be there. Python, IPython, Idle for Python, Eclipse for Python, different request libraries, NC libraries, the GCC, as well as the G++. Those will be available and already previously installed, of course, are going to be networking tools that you'll have access to. For example, things like using uh, ARP ping, ARP spoof, curl, DHCP ping, FTP, MacGov, um, network underscore manager will also be there, ngrep, nload, nmap, ping, TCP dump, telnet, tracepath, traceroute, SSH, wget, as well as Wireshark. Those will also be some of those different network tools that are available that will already be in the operating system itself when you log in. Now that won't be the only thing that you'll have access to. As of this recording, even though I do not have icons for them on the desktop, you will have access, of course, to the Cisco support library. Now these will be limited. Anything that you cannot do any type of, uh, any time that actually requires some type of authorization or authentication, you will not get access to that. But you'll have access to this site. If it's not stored locally, it will actually be kind of right there, but limited. You also have access, of course, to the solutions library, uh, the website here too. And you can find and search for solutions by technology itself. You also have access, of course, to the SD-WAN product documentation, since we know that you will be also, of course, tested in the realm of SD-WAN and of course SDA. Python will be based on the Python 3.88 documentation. And of course the request uh, here too, which is a library for Python, you'll get access to its documentation as well as NC client will also be another one for us uh, that you'll have access to. And the other ones that they mentioned that they have yet to kind of limit down the way that they want to, will of course include APIs for the DNA center as well as some of the other products that Cisco is offering. So if you want to go ahead and take a look at that, make sure you check out our description and you'll see a link there that will allow you to download that particular VM so that you can become familiar with it before the day of your exam. Well, make sure you take a little bit of time here as you do so and subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to see these as they begin to post. Now, for our very next episode, We'll be taking a look, of course, at the question that everybody always is asking right now, which is what is going to be on that design section when it comes down to your CCIE lab exam? We'll take some time and take a look at those details. Well, up to that point, make sure you go back through all of our videos and continue to look forward to the very next one. Thank you for watching.